Welcome back to a third example of solving a Bernoulli differential equation. In this example, we'll take a look at an initial value problem. A differential equation in this form here is a Bernoulli differential equation where n, the exponent on y, is any real number. To solve our Bernoulli differential equation, we're going to perform a substitution using the formula v equals y raised to the power of n minus one. After performing the substitution, the result will be a linear first order differential equation, which we'll solve by using an integrating factor. Then we'll solve for v, then determine the solution to the original differential equation. So let's take a look at our example. The first step is to recognize that the given differential equation does fit the form of a Bernoulli differential equation and that it's in the correct form, meaning the first term is y prime or dy dx. Next, we need to recognize that n is equal to five based upon the power of y. So if n is equal to five, then we're going to use the formula v equals y raised to the power of n minus one to perform our substitution. So v is going to be equal to y raised to the power of one minus five or negative four but we want to perform a substitution into the differential equation for y here and here, as well as y prime or dy dx. So we actually want to solve this equation for y. So if we raise both sides of this equation to the power of negative one-fourth, notice how on the right we would just have y to the first, or y, equals v to the negative one-fourth. Now we want to find y prime or dy dx. This will require implicit differentiation because we have y in terms of v, not in terms of x. So y prime is going to be equal to negative one-fourth times v raised to the power of negative one-fourth minus one, or negative five-fourths, times dv dx. Again, we're applying the chain rule here because we want the derivative in terms of x, not just v. So now using these two equations here, we can perform substitution into the original differential equation. So y prime is going to be all of this, plus two divided by x times y, which is v to the negative one-fourth, equals negative x to the ninth times y to the fifth. Well, if we raise v to the negative one-fourth to the fifth, we would have v to the power of negative five-fourths. Now this differential equation is a linear first order differential equation because it fits this form here, though we do need to manipulate this in order to have this first term be dy dx, or in this case, dv dx. We'll go ahead and do this in two steps to keep it clear. We'll go ahead and divide everything by v to the negative five-fourths to begin with. This will simplify to negative one-fourth dv dx plus two divided by x. Here we'll subtract the exponents. Negative one-fourth minus negative five-fourths would be plus five-fourths. This just becomes v. And on the right side, this simplifies to one, so we have negative x to the ninth. But we still want the first term to be dv dx, so now we're going to multiply through by negative four, giving us dv dx. If we multiply by negative four here, we'll have minus eight divided by x v equals positive four x to the ninth. Now this is a linear first order differential equation in the form that we need. So now we'll find the integrating factor, which is mu of x equals e raised to the power of the integral of p of x dx, where p of x is the function being multiplied by y. In this case, p of x is negative eight divided by x. Let's go ahead and find the integrating factor on the next slide. So again, p of x 
equals negative eight divided by x. So the integrating factor, which we're gonna multiply this differential equation by, is going to be e raised to the power of the integral of negative eight, one over x dx. Notice how I did factor out the negative eight. This is gonna give us e raised to the power of negative eight natural log x. Applying the power rule of logarithms, we can move this coefficient to the exponent position, giving us e raised to the power of natural log x to the negative eighth. And this simplifies nicely just to x to the negative eighth. This is the integrating factor which we'll use to solve this differential equation. Remember here, if our base is e, raise the power of log base e, or natural log, it simplifies just to the number part of the logarithm. So again, now we're gonna multiply everything in this equation by x to the negative eighth. So we'll have x to the negative eighth dv dx. Remember, this is the same as negative eight x to the negative one, so we'll have minus eight x to the negative nine v equals, here, adding the exponents, we just have four x. Now remember, when solving a linear differential equation, once we multiply it through by the integrating factor, the left side of this differential equation, or this side here, is going to be equal to the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and y, or in this case, v. So this is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor, which was x to the negative eighth, times normally y, but in this case it's gonna be v. And because these are equal, this is also equal to the right side, or four x. Which means now we can solve for v if we integrate both sides with respect to x. the integral and derivative undo each other, leaving us with x to the negative eighth times v is equal to, this would be four times x squared divided by two, or just two x squared plus c. And now to solve this for v, we could divide both sides by x to the negative eighth, or multiply by x to the positive eighth. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna multiply both sides by x to the eighth, Remember, adding the exponents, this would be x to the zero times v, which is just v. x to the zero is equal to one. Here we would have two x to the tenth plus c x to the eighth. But remember, we're not done. We're actually trying to solve this for y, not v. So let's finish this on the next slide. Going back to the first slide, remember v is equal to y to the negative fourth or we can say v is equal to one divided by y to the fourth. So performing this substitution, we would have one over y to the fourth must equal two x to the tenth plus c x to the eighth. But let's go ahead and take the reciprocal of both sides. We have y to the fourth equals one divided by two x to the tenth plus c x to the eighth. So this is the general solution to the differential equation, but since we have this initial condition, we want to find the particular solution, which means we want to find the value of c. So if we know y of one equals one, this tells us that when x equals one, our function value, or y, must also equal one. So using y of one equals one, we'll go ahead and use this form of the solution to find c. So if y is equal to one, the left side is one, on the right side, if x is one, we would have two times one to the tenth, which is two, plus if x to the eighth would also be one, so we have c, so we have c equals, subtracting two on both sides, c equals negative one. So the particular solution to this initial value problem is y to the fourth equals one divided by two x to the tenth and then because c is negative one, we'll have minus x to the eighth. To get a visual for this, let's take a look at a graph. The given differential equation can be used to create the red slope field, and then because we're given y of one equals one, we know our particular solution, 
must contain this point here. And if we graph our particular solution, it would be this green graph, and notice how it does fit the slope field nicely and passes through the point, which is our initial condition. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.